Hello everyone, it's GalaxyGuard216 here, and this is a battle I have with Troncat is Yonkers, and because I'm always interested in bringing something new to the OU tier, I am monotyping normal. So I lead off with my Toga case because I'm expecting the Fortress to lead, but he actually leads with this Sizzle, which I guess is okay. Um, so he actually goes for the U-turn, which doesn't do much, because this Togekiss is a beast. Max special attack and some investment in both special defense and defense. So it's a very bulky, heavy hit, as you can see from the damage from that fortress. Um, so anyway, then he brings in the Gliscor, I'm like, oh no, I'm going to have such trouble with this thing. I think I just need to switch into my um, Porygon Z, which is Scarfed, and uh, just go for the Ice Beam. So I get the special attack boost, which is good, and he actually goes for a Sword Stance. So I'm like, praise the loud. Because if that thing had subbed or protected, this would have been very bad. But he actually ran an offensive Gliscor, so that's fine. He brings in his Keldeo, and I'm just going to switch into my Star Rap to try and get the Brave Bird off. With the Intimidate, I don't think he'll be able to hit me, but he turned out to be a special variant, which I guess is actually the more common variant because it all has a higher special attack. Anyway, then he hits me with Hidden Power Ice, Rock, or something. I'm assuming Ice because it's more useful in OU. So now I'm going to bring in my Ambi Palm and just go for the Fake Out and get some chip damage. But this is a normal gem technician boosted Fake Out, so it does half health to this uh, Keldeo. And now I, I think. I could be faster um, because I'm max speed and speed nature, so and I actually am faster, so I uh, take it out with a seed bomb. And he's not scarfed either because, yeah, anyway, he obviously isn't. I bring in my Chassis now just to wall this sizzle. Turns out it has superpower, but I'm thinking with the attack drop, I could probably take another and just go for the wish. But he actually switches that into his fortress, which is a good play on his part because uh, I don't want him to set up hazards. Uh, he actually goes for the Toxic first, which I think, um, now I'm thinking, oh this is good, I outsped it, now I'm going to be able to kill it off with a uh, Seismic Toss, but he actually has a Cust Tap, and gets the hazards up, which is what I didn't want, because my Togekiss does not like those hazards. Um, but whatever, I'm thinking, this ain't too bad, I can Heal Bell this Toxic off, just Wish Protect, Heal Bell, you know, but then he brings in the Sizzle, I'm like, eh, now I'm not too sure. Because <laughs> uh, I could have gone for the Heal Bell here, but then I would have died to the Sizzle next turn, so I go for the Safe Wish, to at least get some health back, so I'm just going to protect, get the wish. I'm not sure if there's a min, max, wish thing, but I'm pretty sure I got, like, duped on my wish. I should go back to the wish store and complain, because that wish was useless. Anyway, maybe it's because I was such low health. I've seen people wish back from, like, 0% to 100%, though, I swear down. Anyway, maybe I'm just, um, what do they call it? Anyway, back to the match. Fake out the Celebi, because I'm thinking he's going to, whatever I hit is going to be good chip damage. I always go for the times 4 effective U-turn. He kind of stays in, which surprises me, because I'm thinking maybe he doesn't see Ambipoms that often, being this OU. Um, so he decides to stay and go for the Psychic. Um, but Ambipoms always U-turn, so. And I'm just going to go for the Air Slash, because it's safe. And in comes the Sizzle. Oh no, I don't. I go for the Roost. Wow, okay, I surprised myself. Roost was a better move there anyway, because now I can take an Iron Head. Um, so I'm just going to T-Wave this, because uh, who doesn't love a good T-Wave? <laughs> uh, so this part is a bit shenanigans, because I miss an Air Slash. Um, I guess the Hax Demigod Togekiss, because uh, obviously it's no Jirachi, but um, the Hax God uh, Jirachi would not bless me with an actual hit on my Air Slash, even though it's like 95% accuracy, I swear down. Something like that, some high accuracy. So I missed that. So I'm just going to roost and make sure I'm healthy enough to take an iron head. But I actually get the power on the roost, which is nice. So that means I can go for flinch. Uh, an air slash, get the flinch, an air slash again. And I hit two successive air slashes, which is good. So now I see this Dragonite, and I'm thinking, I need to T-wave it. And it goes for an outrage, um, which isn't too bad, uh, because I live it, surprisingly. But even then, I could have quite easily fake out my, with my ambipalm and sort of ended that quite prematurely. But I get the T-wave off, which is brilliant, because now I have to beat this thing. So I'm just going to go to break the multi-scale of his air slash. The only thing I want to do with my Tokyo is the stage, but I get a flinch. So that's a bonus. So now I'm just going to keep hammering away at this Dragonite. My second air slash does a whole lot more to it. I'm thinking if I live, I can, uh, if he gets power, I can go through with another air slash. But he actually doesn't. So now I'm just going to bring my Porygon Z, Scarf Porygon Z, just use the Ice Beam, and I'm just going to clear out his Dragonite and his Celebi, and that will be the match. So, yeah, this is quite... A interesting team setup I have. I quite enjoy doing monotype. They actually have a new monotype bug team which maybe I'll set out, set loose in the OU tier but um, yeah this is the match. Thanks very much for watching guys and I will see you next time. Goodbye.